Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Riley, General Manager for Enterprise Search here at Elastic. And today I'm excited to talk to you about Elasticsearch and all the incredible new features we've delivered to our community of developers to build modern search applications. Over the last 11 years, Elasticsearch has become the gold standard for building production scale search applications across a wide variety of use cases. From small workloads to mission critical company defining applications, our community has used Elasticsearch to power everything from e-commerce search to ride shares. We embrace this diversity of use cases and central to our ability to service this broad set of use cases is our dedication to creating a first class developer experience based on powerful foundational technologies that are flexible and composable, all while maintaining the resilience and reliability that these applications require. Our approach has led to a vibrant developer community, and we're thrilled to see the thriving ecosystem that has formed around our products. Over three and a half billion downloads, 100,000 pull requests, and countless integrations. Whether you're asking a question on our discussion forums, on Stack Overflow, or on Twitter, you're never far from the resources you need to build the applications you want. And in addition to the validation we've seen from such strong developer adoption, we've recently received recognition from top industry analysts, placing as leaders in both the Forrester wave for cognitive search and the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Inside Engines. But really, we're just getting started, and we're very excited about investing in three major pillars of search this year, becoming the best unified platform for developing search applications in the cloud, delivering best-in-class relevance capabilities, and providing all the tools and analytics capabilities that those modern search applications require. Let's start by diving into what we're doing with relevance. Now, search technology is constantly evolving. And in just the past year, we've seen a rapid acceleration in the emergence and adoption of new techniques for search and information retrieval. Large language models and vector search in particular are improving rapidly. And with those improvements, consumer expectations of the capabilities of the search applications you build are increasing as well. Our job at Elastic is to anticipate the needs of the developers who are building this next generation of search applications, providing the building block capabilities that they rely on and integrating them natively into the existing set of capabilities and tools. In 2022, we put a large focus on vector search and other relevance enhancing technologies. For example, 8.0 was a big milestone, bringing approximate nearest neighbor algorithms for vector search using the HNSW algorithm directly to Elasticsearch itself. This enables low latency queries, querying at very large scale alongside machine learning model management, which allowed you to upload transformer models directly into Elasticsearch, performing inference on those models in your existing deployments. We made these improvements directly in Lucene which was a slightly longer route from an engineering point of view, but now these capabilities are a native experience. You don't need to use third-party software to use them, and you don't have to worry about learning new APIs in order to take advantage of them. So when you're querying a vector index with HNSW, you get all the benefits that you expect from Elasticsearch, like the query structure and the way that you index data. It also allows us to continue delivering improvements to query performance and other storage-related items. Over the next few releases, we added support for filtering on top of approximate nearest neighbor search and introduced hybrid scoring initially with a simple linear combination. And we have more to talk about coming soon for other combination methodologies. A couple of quick call outs here. The aggregation and filtering work in 8.4 was designed to support the generation, the next generation of search facets. The filters are drop downs that get added to your search UIs and experiences that your customers expect and help your users meaningfully reduce and refine their search result sets. For those of, who, of you who are really familiar with this space, we should say that our approach to facets and filtering is kind of unique. We developed an algorithm to search over HNSW graphs while applying filtering using a pre-filtering approach that improves performance and doesn't require a significant amount of configuration from the search operator. These releases all culminated with the GA of our vector search release and enhancements in the 8.5 release. And since then, we have focused a lot on making the user experience easier, more accessible and refined, while continuing to drive storage and resource efficiency. Another innovation I'd like to call out is the capability to bring your own model. 
you can either load a proprietary model that you train yourself, or you can pull one from a model repository like Hugging Face. In either case, you have the flexibility to bring whatever model best serves your use case. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. But our mission to continuously improve search relevance requires that we deliver these sophisticated tools to any developer using Elasticsearch. We constantly hear from developers that they'd like to apply these new and interesting machine learning and vector search techniques to their use cases, but there are barriers to that process. Training an ML model can be a challenge if you don't have internal data science expertise, or if you don't have the training data necessary to fine tune your own model. To solve this challenge and to continue to democratize access to machine learning for search applications, we've been working on an out of the box, zero shot model that generalizes really well and minimizes the need to adapt or train the model to your domain. This approach dramatically reduces the time and resource burden on your team and provides fantastic relevance out of the box. We've named this model the Sparse Late Interaction Model, or SLIM for short, and it's a very new and exciting area of work for us, so expect things to continue to change and evolve, but we're very excited about it. So why is this important to us? Well, to see how this new approach compared with some of the other models that have been around, we ran some comparisons on, on search ranking models that have become standard and saw what the scores looked like. And what we found is really exciting. I'm going to take you through some of those examples here. On the horizontal axis are the public data sets for common benchmarks that are commonly used for applications like this. These data sets include question answer responses, claim evidence pairs across fields such as climate records, financial analysis data, biomedical articles, and English language sentences and arguments. On the vertical axis are search ranking methods. We used BM25 search results, the typical ranking methodology as the first row, and that's our benchmark. You'll see the term RRF, reciprocal rank fusion, in some of the examples that we show here. And RRF is a simple method for combining results or doing hybrid scoring from multiple different ranking methodologies. For instance, in the third row, we combine BM25 and dense vector search using RRF. The BM25 benchmark scores are on the first line. Moving down the table, scores in green are better than the benchmark, scores in red delivered worse search quality results than the benchmark. Moving down from BM25, the second test is RRF applied over a combination of BM25 and dense vector search. There are some mixed results here, some better, some worse. The next set of results was with a linear combination of BM25 and dense vector search and with the SPLAID technique. Now SPLAID is a late interaction model that actually inspired the SLIM model that we've developed. And again, here you see some better and some worse results, but it's starting to trend, to trend towards better search results overall. And then finally, the last set of results in the last two rules are where we've combined, we've ranked searches using SLIM by itself and also combined it with BM25 using RRF. And those results really are incredible. Across all sorts of data sets, from financial data to weather data to biomedical articles and arguments in plain English, the combination of SLIM and BM25 based rankings provides superior quality search results as compared to BM25 by itself and all other combined search ranking methods that we tested. Since it consistently outperforms on this wide variety of data sets, we anticipate it will improve search result quality for your data too. Given that we'll be shipping SLIM with Elasticsearch, what this means for you is that you'll have access to an out of the box model that will generalize well to your domain and boost the quality of your search results without the need for extensive training or expensive investments. All you need to do is pick the new model as an inference stage while you index data into Elasticsearch. And we're gonna show you an example of that in a demo shortly. But to quickly recap, there are really three things at work here. First, it's a new model available out of the box that requires no adaptation or work for you. There's the introduction of reciprocal rank fusion for a better approach to hybrid scoring and hybrid score combinations. And lastly, we've intuitively integrated all of these changes into the existing Elasticsearch APIs that you're already familiar with. So it should be really easy to get up and running with it. Okay, now let's take a look at a demo where you can see some of this in action. Hey everyone, my name is Casey Zumwalt and I'm a product manager here at Elastic focusing on search. In today's demo, we're gonna build a natural language processing search experience and we'll do it using a lot of the features that you heard about today. So, 
To get started, we're going to ingest some documents. They're documents from a fictional knowledge base from a fictional streaming service called Elastiflex. We're going to pull those from a MySQL database, place them into an Elasticsearch index, and then I'll talk to you about ingest pipelines, where we'll be able to run those documents through interesting pipelines like machine learning inference pipelines to create vector embeddings or sentiment analysis. And then once we've got our documents in and properly processed, we're gonna create a search experience to compare results between two different types of indices so we can see the results of a natural language processing query. So let's get started. Our first step in building this demo is making sure that we can sync documents from our external MySQL database. And luckily for us, Elastic actually ships a MySQL connector. So our first goal should be coming in and creating an index. The first thing I'll do is navigate to an enterprise search and create an Elasticsearch index. And you can see we have several ingestion methods here. Uh, the one that we're gonna be concerned about is using a connector. So we'll choose this ingestion method and we'll name our index. In this case, I'm gonna choose FAQ. Now that we've created the index, it's up to us to choose the right connector. Uh, at the time of this recording, we actually ship a couple of connectors for connecting to databases. We have one for MongoDB and one for MySQL. And then we also ship a couple of fully featured frameworks for building connectors yourself to connect to just about any data source you have access to. Our purposes today, we're gonna choose MySQL. So now that we've created our index, chosen our connector, the next step is gonna be making sure that we can connect to that MySQL database and sync documents into our Elasticsearch index. And I'll set that up now. As you can see, I've successfully connected our MySQL database to our Elasticsearch index using the connector. The configuration was super simple, and it's just a few parameters that you're probably used to if you've connected a MySQL database or any database to any other system. Now that we're all connected, the next thing I want to do is scroll up and manage something called scheduling. So we've successfully set up our connector, but the thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we enable a schedule so that we're constantly syncing documents at a, ca a cadence that makes sense for us. I think for our purposes today, syncing every day at about midnight is probably just fine. So we'll save that. And now that we're all set up, the next step is to sync and make sure we can get some documents. All right, it looks like our sync is done. So let's go check the documents view and see if we're seeing the documents that we expect. It looks like we've got about 670 documents and there they are. So our documents are really simple. There's only a couple of fields that we're probably gonna be concerned about. We have one for the title of a document and we have one for the content of the document. And that should be enough to build a really simple search experience. But next I wanna to talk to you about ingest pipelines and how we might take these documents and enrich them with additional data. So we'll do that next. If I scroll back up to the top of our view here, we'll see an option for pipelines. I'll click on that. And you'll see here that ingest pipelines are a feature inside of our Elasticsearch indices. You can see that we actually already have a default pipeline. And I wanna take a look at that just to show some of the processing that we're doing for every document by default. So there's a lot of really interesting and useful stuff here. For one, we're gonna perform content extraction on images and PDF files by default. Uh, we're also gonna reduce white space, which is really handy for making sure that our documents are nice and tidy. And then you'll see a really interesting one here, ML inference pipelines, which we're gonna get into more. Essentially, we can enhance our data at ingest time using machine learning models. A critical part of today's demo is gonna come from this feature in Elasticsearch, the support for trained machine learning models. We can actually import uh, PyTorch models that we train ourselves or models from popular hubs like Hugging Face directly into Elasticsearch, then utilize them at ingest time via our ingest pipelines. And we actually have a few models preloaded here. One is a language identification model that does exactly what it sounds like. It can take a document and try and identify the language of that document. The second one is a sentence transformer model that creates text embeddings based on the sentence transformer. And the last one is one you may have heard about a little bit earlier today, but it's called SLIM or a sparse late interaction model. That's the model that we're going to use today for our demo. Our next step is gonna be taking all these documents that we ingested earlier and running them through a machine learning model that we just talked about, the SLIM or the sparse late interaction model. So to do that, I've actually copied our original index that we created earlier and created a new one just for this purpose. You can see that we still have the same 670 documents, but here we're gonna actually set up a pipeline to use SLIM. 
So you can see here that we still have our original default pipeline, but I've created a custom one that's gonna allow us to use a machine learning inference pipeline. And for this purpose, I've chosen the slim model that we just spoke about. So if we come back up here and resync our documents, it's gonna go grab those same documents again from the MySQL database, but as they're ingested, it'll run them through the ML inference pipeline and we should end up with some pretty interesting results. And this should only take a couple of seconds. All right, now that that's done, let's go take a look at our documents again and see if we can see any changes. So we still have our content, we still have our title, but you'll notice a couple of new fields. One, we have an ingest field that kind of serves as a summary of, of what kind of processing has happened to this document. And you can see that it's been run through a pipeline, our ML inference slim, and you can see there's a couple of other parameters here that are pretty interesting. One, there's a PyTorch pipeline, and it's done some text embedding. But if we scroll down here, we're gonna see a really interesting field, the ML field, that is full of vector embeddings and representations of this document. So now that we have a fully embedded set of documents, we can actually go build a search experience and try out our natural language processing queries. So let's do that next. I've created a really simple search interface that's gonna allow us to enter a single query and compare the results between our two indices that we created earlier. So we have our first index that just is full of raw documents, no tuning being applied, and our second index where we took those documents and ran them through our ML inference pipeline and created some vector embeddings, which should enable some pretty cool NLP use cases. So as a reminder, our document set is a fake knowledge base from our fake streaming service, Elastiflix. So we're gonna to wanna to enter some queries that make sense for that context. So I'll start with a really simple one. Can I watch offline? And you can see there's already a dramatic difference between the left-hand side, the completely untuned Elasticsearch index, and the right-hand side, the index where we've taken all these documents and created vector embeddings for them. And the right-hand side is completely relevant. Maybe not super relevant after the first result, but that first result is pretty much exactly what we're aiming for. And that's the most important thing to deliver to a customer, You know, the, the exact result or the exact thing that they're looking for. And we did this again with literally no real tuning to our Elasticsearch index. We simply run all of these documents through our ML inference pipelines, and we ended up with a really, really nice result set. And there's still beyond this, there's so much possibility to really tune the relevance of these indexes and end up with an even better result set for every query. And one other thing you'll notice here in the top right corner of the hybrid search box, you'll see a toggle for enabling RRF or reciprocal rank fusion. An important thing to note about this result set on the right is it's actually a hybrid set of results. We took a single query and we combined results from two different indices, the two that you see here. So our full text search BM25 index and our index that's full of text embeddings. And because of that, the, the, the query actually pulls all those results together and creates um, the best possible set of results using RRF. Um, so yeah, with again, without too much work, we ended up with a really nice result set. Um, so we looked at this query. Let's take a look at one more query just to see if we can have some more consistent results. So we, we wanted to see if we could watch offline. Let's also see if we can change our plan. And again, we're left with a, a pretty uh, maybe irrelevant set of results on the left, again, with our completely untuned Elasticsearch index. And on the right, again, we have pretty much exactly the result that we're looking for uh, on the right as the top result. So it's super exciting. Again, very little uh, work on our part other than using these ML inference pipelines. Um, we've ended up with some really, really nice results. So, and that's our demo. And uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it. We are super excited about these features uh, and we hope that you are as well. Um, so just to recap, we looked at a couple of things today. One, we imported or ingested a lot of documents from an external database. In our case, it was MySQL. Uh, we brought those documents into an Elasticsearch index. We ran each document through an ML inference pipeline that added text embeddings. And then we built a really simple search experience and saw some really nice results from some natu natural language queries. Um, so yeah, exciting stuff. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Casey. I hope you can see why we're so excited about our relevant story here. With these capabilities in vector search, machine learning enabled ingestion capabilities, it's really all coming together. Now, I spoke about three pillars earlier, and we looked pretty deeply at relevance. But let's take a look at what unified search experiences and analytical capabilities really mean as well. Elastic Cloud provides the best set of tools to build search experiences, and that extends to where your data lives. 
You can use our integrations to sync any source of searchable data with a production-ready framework built to optimize ingested data for applied models. Whether you'd like to crawl the web, ingest data from within your cloud, or across hybrid cloud scenarios, we have a tool that should be able to serve that need. We launched our web crawler last year, and the ever-expanding library of connectors that we've released makes it really easy for you to ingest your data wherever it lives into Elasticsearch for your search applications. We support third-party services, connectors into popular databases such as MongoDB, Amazon S3, file systems and network drives, really wherever your data resides. We're, our aim is to make sure that we have a first-party tool that allows you to pull that data into Elasticsearch simply and easily and repeatedly as that data in the third-party system changes. In the demo, you've got a small preview of what machine learning integrated ingestion looks like. With what we call ML inference pipelines, you can add natural language processing tasks as part of the process of ingesting data. Customers are using this capability to augment product review data with sentiment, for example. You can also make this capability your own by bringing a trained ML model specific to your industry or verticalized use case. And with data-driven analytics later this year, we'll be launching tools that allow search operators to better understand their customers and their users, helping them to see what their users are doing as they interact with these search experiences, collect all of that information and analytical knowledge, store it into Elasticsearch, and then use that to augment the relevance models that we've been building with these machine learning models to continuously improve them based on the users that are interacting with those models. Ultimately, this is going to allow you to provide high quality search results that are personalized to the individual users on your website or in your application, all while enabling multivariate testing and improve, ensuring that you can improve your customer experience every step of the way. It's incredibly exciting, and so I hope you'll keep watching this space. Now, that wraps up our product announcements for now but I encourage you to stick around for a lot of the great content that we have planned for the rest of this event. A few talks that I'm personally looking forward to are listed on the screen here. My colleague, Uri Cohen, is discussing how search will evolve as we move to a serverless architecture, which is gonna be a huge step forward in the way we deliver Elasticsearch to you and the rest of our customer base. The next one that I'm excited about features Cisco. They're working on a customer support use case and they're using Elastic to index millions of pieces of content to better inform their support teams and also give their customers public access to knowledge information so they can help themselves when they have questions about how to use those products. The last talk that I would encourage you to join, but certainly not least, is a talk by Adeline, the French search technology company who uses Elastic for a number of their customer search projects. They have some great best practices to share that you can apply for your e-commerce use cases, and I hope you'll enjoy it. That's it for me. Enjoy Elasticon, and thank you for being here.